Well, hello everybody. This is Deb, and as promised, I am going to attempt <laughs> to bring you a series of videos on a paper pro uh, paper project that um, I hope that you will enjoy. I've tried to be very organized and think through all the the different elements without actually putting it together, which is difficult. Because, you know, you're used to thinking through, or at least I am, as you, as you're being creative. And so, being organized is kind of, <laughs> kind of a style cramper. So, I've got notes, I've got stuff all spread out. We'll see how I do. Now, let me give you this disclaimer. I am at my home. I've got two yippy dogs that we call the bark alarm. So at any moment, you may hear barking. You may hear my husband out in the garage doing cutting and sawing. It is just hard telling. So that's my disclaimer. Okay, so this first video is to tell you the supplies that you are going to need and that you can begin to gather. Um, I don't know if... I will have all of the videos recorded. I, I don't know what time period. I know that I will record this one and then I will um, put it on the put it in the group. I don't know how long my phone will record. I I don't know anything about recording. So we're gonna learn this together. So um, these are the supplies that you're gonna need. Now, let me also tell you that. I have a written uh, list that you will be able to access on uh, our group, and I will put that out there. You will also be able to access the uh, sewing-themed paper applique templates, which looks like this. I have drawn all these little shapes um, so that you have uh, a, a place to begin um, in your paper project. I don't want you to have to spend a lot of money. I don't want you to have to spend any money. Now, and you may have to buy glue. I don't know. But um, I don't want you to have to spend a great deal of money in order to enjoy this project because... You don't know whether or not you're going to like doing it or not. So that's that's my goal. This one is sewing themed. I'm hoping that I'm going to have a garden themed one. Maybe a schoolhouse themed one. Uh, which would be vintage. All of this is going to be, you know, a primitive vintage vibe. Um, <clears throat> also, uh, maybe a uh, farm uh, with farm animals and things. So, but anyway, so I have drawn all these little pictures, all these little images, and rather than just leave them blank, because when you cut around them to use them as a template, like this, you don't need all this frou-frou. But I added frou-frou to give you, um, you know, inspiration, or uh, hopefully you can use these kind of ideas when you put it together in your uh in your book in your sewing themed which i'm i'm kind of calling it a needle book but it's gonna be a big needle book so but that's kind of where my mind is um so you'll also have these available and so what you'll want to do is download both of these things, the supply list and the, the um, images. You'll want to print the images on a heavier paper. See, this is regular paper. This is heavier paper. Because it makes it much easier when you use these as a template, it makes it much easier to trace around them when it's on heavier paper. So... Uh, you can use cardstock. I mean, you know, whatever, whatever you've got. That, and my printer prints it without any problems. So, um, you'll also want some type of a book um, 
that is your inspiration. This is my inspiration. Um, you want it to be yours and how you like it and the things that inspire you. So you, you just pick the book and you're going to disassemble this. You're going to cut it all up. You're going to, you're going to, you know, it's not going to look like this when you get done. But this is the book that I chose. Um, another example might be um, this book from, uh, who did this? I don't know, but it's got all these different feed sacks information in there, which is a really fun book. I have made lots of things out of this book, as you can see. The cover is gone. I think Julie Porter has got the cover on her on one of her books. Um, another book that I like to use are uh, quilt making books that have got really neat. Um, I like the ones that have got the, the, uh, patterns, the instructions, because you can cut these out and put them in. I mean, there's all kinds of things. I, you are only limited by your, uh, look how cool this is by your uh, imagination. So, I mean, this is, this is a good, this is a good, uh, example of, of a quilt book that you could use. Here's another one. It's got really neat um, patterns that you can cut out and put in there. So, you know, you might want to have more than one book um, like, like these, um, like I did. Or you could just use one. Or you could use a magazine. Uh, maybe a gardening magazine or a country sampler or you know uh, an old uh, maybe you've got a collection of, of vintage work basket magazines all kinds of things so you'll need those you'll also need a um, variety of paper now this doesn't have to be uh, fancy paper it could just be scraps it could be junk mail book pages here's you know here's a, a dictionary page here is a vintage um, page out of a crochet pamphlet you know there's a book that I got at the dollar store or not the dollar store the uh, Goodwill you know all kinds of just just paper this is packing paper oh I love this packing paper see how great it sounds um, so you'll see that in my book that I have used this a lot. Came from Amazon, my favorite place to shop. This is um, painter's paper. So just go dig around, see what you got. Paper, it works. It doesn't make any difference what kind it is. Junk envelopes, junk mail. You know, maybe you get, uh, I don't, I rarely get junk mail. So I'm ripped off, but anyway, so. Um, <clears throat> you'll want to have, hang on before I get to that, ruler, scissors, pencil, a bone folder. Now, if you do not have a bone folder, you can use the, the side of your scissors or some other kind of thing. Um, but the, you must have something to help you with your folds. It'll make your job so much easier. If you decide that you, for some reason, want to buy a bone folder, I highly recommend Teflon. They cost just about as much as a, as a plastic bone folder, but Teflon is awesome. They give you very crisp folds. They glide over the paper so nicely and nothing sticks because it's Teflon. So, um, you want to have a glue. This is what I use. Scotch Create glue stick. You definitely want a glue stick. The reason for that is because when you are gluing down large areas of either paper or fabric this happens to be a piece of fabric it covers the entire thing in a smooth fashion 
you you will not see any lines or anything like that and it does a really good job of gluing it down especially if you're going to sew around it and yes you can sew over dried glue you absolutely can as a quilter you have probably used all kinds of uh iron on adhesives <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> this is no different so <clears throat> The, uh, and as you can see, this is a quick dry, so, I mean, it's already on there. Um, what I would do is, you know, just glue, just put glue in the center and then sew around it. So, glue stick. Now, if you don't want to buy this kind, you can use the Elmer's glue stick, the heavy duty or whatever it's called. I do not recommend the Elmer's white glue, okay, which would be, which is considered a wet glue, um, instead, you want to get some kind of a tacky glue. Elmer's wet glue, you will not be happy with Elmer's wet, wet glue. You just, you just won't. It just, it, it's not, uh, it's okay for a kid. It's not okay for you when you're going to do something that you may want to use as a keepsake or whatever. So, I use, again, the Scotch Create Tacky Glue. It is permanent. And it dries really fast. And it dries uh, clear. Um, the other kind of glue that I use is the Beacon 3-in-1. Uh, or you might... The 3-in-1 is cheaper than Fabri-Tac. It's the exact same glue. But the 3-in-1 is cheaper. Both made by Be Beacon. Um, but this is a little cheaper than... Um, than the uh, Fabri-Tac. You can get these at Hobby Lobby, Joanne, wherever. Now you'll notice that my 3-in-1 I have put into a smaller bottle, which is very easy to squeeze and has more control. It has this little uh, twist off thing. Um, because once you put it on, you want to close this right away or else it just comes out like a volcano. I can't stand this glue, but it is, it, I mean, you really have to have this glue, especially if you're going to put lace or because it, it dries so fast. I mean, once it's down, I mean, it's there. All of these are the same thing. Once you have it where you want it, you don't think you're going to take it up because you're not. So... But this is really intended for like lace or fabric or, you know, things, things that are heavy um, that you, that you might want to put down would be another good example. Sorry for this three in one. So, uh, <clears throat> the other thing that, uh, oh, I wanted to show you, um, be sure I have everything. Yes. So wait. You're going to want some kind of ephemera. And ephemera is this all kinds of little stuff. So, you know, uh, we will definitely be using this. This is a label from a piece of clothing. You know, some pins because it's sewing themed. So, you know, we're going to put some pins in there. That's an old buckle. That's a, you know, a hexy thing. You're going to want to, you know, just put all kinds of little doohickeys and dabs and all kinds of stuff. Here's some old, here's an old sewing, uh, or a needle, um, pack, which is really cool. And <clears throat> again, now here, here's something that we'll be putting on there too, is I bought, uh, these silver thimbles at, through Amazon. Got them, I mean, by the jillions. They came in a by jillion, a bajillion package. I hear all my, my little dog at the door. And uh, had my husband flatten them. Oh, they're so cute on a, on a little book. These are cool. Uh, there's a buckle set, you know, all kinds of this. You know, you just never know. Just little scissors. Just dig through, see what you got. Put it in a bowl, get it ready. That kind of a thing. Okay, so also, um, you never know. Just, you just, what you want to do is you want to pull stuff out, gather it together, 
get it all ready because you don't know what's going to float your boat. You don't know what it is that you're going to, you know, are you going to use any of these to do some hand stitching in there? Because I am going to do hand stitching in mine. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's, we're going to, we're going to really go out all out on this thing. Um, this is something that I made, had around, you know, this is an old crochet thing. You know, you want little scripts and scraps of paper or paper, <laughs> fabric. We're going to do all kinds of, uh, uh, we're going to make clusters and all other kinds of things. Um, ribbons. This is uh, bias tape. You know, all kinds of fabric. This is uh, a tablecloth that I tore up and, you know, that's the leftover from that. So, you know, there's all kinds of ribbons. And so just kind of collect some things. Go around, you know, have in your mind what your theme is going to be, how you want it to look. You know kind of what the coloring is so as you can see here with the granny chic all these things that I you know um, collected are all kinds of like you know her her coloring and um, this kind of stuff a lot of crochet stuff um, also you don't ever want to throw away even the tiniest littlest bittiest scrap that don't throw that away that's awesome because we will make, isn't this cute? So we're just going to take a piece of fabric. We're just going to sew little strips and scraps on there. I mean, all kinds of stuff, all kinds of stuff's in here. And you want to save it all. When you disassemble your book, well, and sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself because one of the videos will be, um, and in fact, it's going to be the next one. How to cut, tear, and age paper. How to disassemble your book and to make the cover. And what you want to collect, what you want to get ready is how, whatever it is that you're going to make your cover out of, you want to get that ready. So, to make your cover, you can use, this is just a paper bag. This is a card blank. I got this. It came with the card and the uh, envelopes. Hobby Lobby. And in fact, that's what this was made from. Looks like maybe, no, it's the same size. This one happens to be covered in, in fabric, as you can see. Um, this one is one that I did recently. I haven't decorated it yet. But you can see all the different, uh, this is tissue paper, all the different stuff, okay? Again, this is just made out of paper bag that, we've, that I've sewn on, okay? This is, this is my inspiration for this time. So as you can see, my cover, which is paper bag, is going to have... It's all, also going to have fabric on it. This vintage fabric that I got from someplace, who knows where. And it's got, you know, uh, dress paper. It's got book page from the Granny Chic uh, book. It's got quilt paper. Oops, I got those cut out. Um, here's another idea. Now, you can buy digis. Oh my gosh, you can buy every kind of digi that there is. Um, but I have actually photocopied with my printer some of my uh, embroidery, some of my crochet items, um, because sometimes they're so heavy that they don't lend themselves well to a, a, a book. Sometimes they do, but sometimes they don't. don't. So if you want to make them into paper then you, you know, then this is the way you can do that. Okay, so this is packing paper from Amazon. Here's another piece of uh, one of the quilt books. Here's a piece of paper that I uh, printed from someplace. Here's some of the tissue paper that somebody had sent me. So, so when you have your paper obviously you're going to fold it in half and then what you know whatever whatever half is here then you're going to have the other half over here on this side makes sense 
So once we put this all together, then you will sew in the center, just like this one. And then we'll decorate it with all of our uh, little scripts and scraps um, that we have cut either cut out of our book. This is this is this is something that I cut out of the book, or the images that we uh, use the templates. So these are the things that you're going to want to start collecting now. Let me be sure that I have covered everything. Um, so yeah, your fabric scraps, lace and trim scraps, your crochet rosettes or pieces, velvet and other ribbons. So I think I've pretty much covered everything. Vintage paper, such as book pages from a quilt or sewing books, postcards, anything that you're willing to, to tear it up or cut it up because you're, you will disassemble whatever it, it is. Um, a good, I mean, go to junk stores, thrift stores, whatever, and there, that's a good place for you to find those. Um, start getting, start collecting or kind of getting into your mind how you want this to look, um, and whether or not you want to use paper bag or, you know, another thing that you could use, which I don't have one right here, but I got a really neat, um, I bought at a junk store a whole bunch of um, old greeting cards and you could use an old greeting card and use it as the base of your uh, of your book so anyway um, I think that I've covered everything um, and if you have any questions you can certainly ask me but again our next video will be how to cut tear an age paper disassemble your book and make a cover i guess i should show you this other thing too this is how i age my paper i use distress oxide there are lots of youtube videos out there that show you how to dye paper or or age paper and i do both and i have lots but it's very laborious it's messy and I'm not going to do that on video. There are other videos out there that will show you just as well as me. So go to YouTube, look it up if that's what you'd like to do. I mean, I do use aged paper, um, but I'm not going to show you how to do that. And I'm not going to use it in this, pro in this project because I don't want you to have to buy this. I'll show you how to do it, but I don't, I don't want you to have to buy anything. I want you to be able to use whatever that you have. For the most part, you know, like I said, you're probably going to have to buy some glue so that you, you're happy with your result. So, um, did I tell you all the other ones? Okay, so video number three is going to be how to sew on paper. So, I'm going to show you, you know, stitch link. We're going to do some projects, you know, and all that other kind of stuff. And so, at the end of... The second video, I will tell you what you need for the next video so that you can start getting that ready. Video number four is um, how to make the signature. So this is the cover. This is your cover. Or, you know, this would be your cover. Okay. Okay. What you have inside there, this is considered your signature. Now, sometimes you're, you may want your signature to all be cut and be nice and neat and, and pretty. I, that, that, I, that doesn't appeal to me. That's not what I want. So you're going to see that I've got all different sizes. You know, I just picked it out and put it in there. I don't care that it hangs over. In fact, it, that's that appeals to me. Is you know that hanging over? You may not like that, and you want to. You may want to trim yours off, and that's fine. Um, there are some um, some books that I have done 
that I did I did trim it off. And, oh, let me look at this one. Hang on, I'll show you. So like this one. So this one has, you know, got more meat, but it's also a smaller project. And, um, so it's, it's more neat, um, and tidy. So, but it's entirely up to you, whatever you like. I want you to make it the way that you like it and, um, and the way that you will enjoy it. So, um, I think that's everything. I look forward to making the next video and, um, moving on with the project. So this is Deb signing off. Talk to you later.